Breaking news with Democratic Congressman Jamie Raskin. He's a member of both the Judiciary and the Oversight Committees. Uh, Congressman, thanks so much for joining us. And as you just heard, we literally only a few minutes ago got the transcripts of uh, OMB official Mark Sandy, State Department official Philip uh, Rieger. Uh, you were there when they were testifying under oath. Now their testimony, their depositions have been released in these transcripts. What, out, what stood out to you from their testimony? Well, uh, Mark Sandy was a fascinating witness because he blew the whistle in his own way um, about the budgetary process because he knew that things were happening in an extremely unusual, indeed unique way. Uh, Congress had appropriated this money. The president had signed uh, into law the appropriation going to Ukraine. Uh, basically, all of the I's had been dotted and the T's had been crossed by everybody, and then it was held up. And he immediately raised the question of whether or not this was a violation of the Impoundment Control Act of 1974, which was adopted in the wake of Watergate precisely to crack down on executives deciding to treat money appropriated by Congress as their own for their own political purposes. And that, of course, is precisely what Donald Trump did. He decided to use this money as leverage to put Zelensky in a box, as he told Ambassador Sondland. He wanted to put Zelensky in a box in order to extract from him the political dirt on Joe Biden that he was looking for. And this OMB official said this looks very strange, um, essentially, and asked questions about the lawfulness of what was taking place. Yeah, we see that. We're just beginning to go through uh, these transcripts. Uh, the Deputy Associate Director for National Security at OMB, Mark Sandy, uh, and the Acting Assistant Secretary of State for European and Eurasian Affairs, Philip Rieker. Uh, do you know why these two individuals were not called uh, before the House Intelligence Committee to testify publicly? Well, I mean, the, all of these witnesses are stand-up, noble, and in some ways heroic citizens for uh, basically dodging the president's efforts to obstruct their testimony. Um, but we tried to go for the witnesses who could speak in the most comprehensive and holistic ways. And these are witnesses who dealt with specific issues but corroborated the general testimony of the others. I think that, uh, that Mr. Reeker spoke uh, very eloquently and passionately about the attack on Ambassador Yovanovitch, which he thought was outrageous. And he um, thought that the smear campaign uh, full of lies and propaganda against Ambassador Yovanovitch was something that should have been denounced by the State Department and is not something that should have been countenanced either by the State Department or presumably by the president. Yeah, no, I'm just beginning myself to look through these uh, transcripts uh, just from a personal perspective. It would have been good to hear them publicly say what they told you guys in private as well. I think the American public would have uh, learned something additionally from their testimony. Uh, as you probably know, the president tweeted earlier today, and I'm quoting the president right now, that uh, John Bolton is a patriot, he said, and may know that I held back the money from Ukraine because it is considered a corrupt country. And I wanted to know why nearby European countries weren't putting up money also. Uh, so, so even if the president ordered this, how do you get to his motive? Well, uh, one thing we do is we try to put it into the context of his whole foreign policy. President Trump has never made uh, corruption a priority. He has uh, never taken on any country for being corrupt. On the contrary, a lot of his best friends are extremely corrupt, like Vladimir Putin in Russia, Orban in Hungary, the homicidal and corrupt crown prince of Saudi Arabia. These are people where uh, he certainly could have raised corruption if that was something that concerned him, but it never did. And he never used the word corruption in the July 5th telephone call, and he never raised any episode of alleged corruption other than Joe Biden. Look, everybody knows the truth. He was looking for a, a dynamite political announcement by Zelensky that the Bidens were being investigated, and that was all for political purposes. This president, if he cared about corruption, he would care about the foreign and domestic emoluments clauses of the United States Constitution, which prevent him from accepting money from foreign princes, kings, and states. And yet, uh, we know that uh, he has been in uh, dereliction of respect for the foreign emoluments clause, and he's been 
collecting also hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars from uh, federal departments that spend money at the Mar-a-Lago Hotel and at other Trump properties in the country. So uh, corruption is very, very low down the list. In fact, this president has crossed over the line on corruption, and so that is not going to work as a functional alibi for him. Your committee, uh, the Judiciary Committee, uh, has now scheduled its first impeachment hearing for next Wednesday, uh, but a new CNN poll shows that public hearings in the Intelligence Committee over the past couple of weeks have not shifted Americans' opinions on impeachment at all. Do you think the Judiciary Committee will be more successful from your perspective in getting more Americans to support impeaching and eventually removing the president from office? Well, the first thing we got to say, Wolf, is that the fact hearings were a tremendous success that were conducted by the Intelligence Committee and Oversight and Foreign Affairs because they got the truth out and they got these remarkable witnesses to come forward to speak honestly under oath about what happened. Everybody who's throwing stones at them from the White House are people who refuse to testify and are not under oath and refuse to go under oath. Um, Look, when, but when the uh, impeachment hearings began against Richard Nixon, only 19% of the people favored impeachment. Today, 50% of the country favors impeachment of Donald Trump, and the word is just getting out. People are just assimilating and digesting this basic tidal wave of facts and disclosures that are coming in about the president's Ukraine shakedown and all of the surrounding corruption around it. So people are just learning about it now. And there is a momentum in this process. We are going to be turning, as Chairman Nadler from the Judiciary Committee announced earlier today, uh, we're going to be turning to the question of the Constitution and the law. We know all of the essential uh, fact findings coming from the last few weeks. But now we're going to look at the question of high crimes and misdemeanors. What did the founders mean when they said uh, treason, bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanors in um, uh, Article 2 of the Constitution. And what they meant was basically betrayal of the n national security, that's what treason's about, betrayal of the government in the public interest, that's what bribery is about, and then other high crimes and misdemeanors are other offenses against the character of our government. And I think that there may not be another case in U.S. presidential history of as a series of events which came more within right. the contemplation of the founders. What James Madison talked about precisely was selling out the country to foreign powers. And that was uh, his principal concern and why he wanted to make sure that impeachment remained an instrument within the Constitution for the people in the Congress. Your uh, committee uh, chairman, the Judiciary Committee chairman, Jerry Nadler, in this letter that was released a couple hours ago uh, to the president, uh, said he could participate in your hearings next Wednesday. But I, I don't know, if, uh, Chairman Nadler, if you knew uh, that the president has long been scheduled to be in London next Wednesday at the 70th anniversary of NATO. Uh, there's a summit going on. People are celebrating NATO's 70th anniversary. Did, were you aware that the president was going to be in London next week when the chairman sent him this letter asking him to show up next Wednesday before the hearing? No, that's the first that I'm hearing of it. Um, uh, I'm cheered to know that the president would celebrate anything having to do with NATO because he hasn't been a very big champion of it. So he might decide to stay back anyway for our uh, hearing on the Constitution and impeachment. Of course, he hasn't been a very big champion of the Constitution either. He thinks that under Article 2 of the Constitution, he can do whatever he wants, which, of course, is in complete violation of the spirit and the letter of the Constitution. The founders of, the, of our country wanted the president to be a salaried employee who accepted a salary and no other emoluments from the government and faithfully executed the laws of the people. That's the core job of the president, to be commander in chief in times of actual conflict, but then to faithfully execute the laws, not to defy the laws, not to violate the laws, but to execute them. And the minute that a president decides he's not going to faithfully execute the laws, but rather run off and commit high crimes and misdemeanors against the people, that's the moment at which the impeachment provisions are triggered. And this is very much part of our constitutional design. Congressman uh, Jamie Raskin of the Judiciary Committee, you guys are going to be busy next week and the weeks to follow. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, happy Thanksgiving to you. Happy Thanksgiving.